Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Florence for EU4 1.34 Lions of the North. So Florence is a nation that starts off in central Italy and it has been about a year since our last guide for Florence so I thought it was time to refresh them and as many of you know it's one of my favorite nations in EU4 top three for sure along with Austria and the Mamluks so I always love making videos and guides about Florence as well. Florence is one of the best nations if not the best nation in EU4 to play tall with with our amazing playing tall focused national ideas that have minus 10% dev discount plus two yearly people influence and plus 5% discipline as a finisher and then we got a tech and idea discount merc maintenance discount interest per annum minus 0.5 yearly prestige trade efficiency plus 15% which is really really strong plus 10% production efficiency and plus 25% national manpower a very very strong national idea set and our great mission will help us conquer Italy develop our nation and become one of the strongest nations in the world while simultaneously not holding that much territory at least in the early game. So sit back and relax and take a look at what you need to do as Florence. And before we begin, if you enjoy this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you wanna see more guys like this or more EU4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Florence. All right, all right, so here we are as Florence and the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually check off this mission right here, which will give us improved relations and diplo relations and then a further missions which will give us claims now for this mission right here we need 12 diplomatic points per month and as you can see right now we're making eight but we'll fix that pretty soon we also start off with cosimo de medici here who's a 655 one of the best rulers at the start of the game but before all that we do need to go into our estates and summon the diet you can pick whichever agenda is best for you then we're going to give the clergy religious state and clerical advisory council along with religious diplomats we're going to give the nobles primacy of the nobility, increased levies and aristocratic counselors, and we're going to give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, and commercial advisory board. No indebted to the burghers just yet, because we can't have any loans to unlock this mission. Next, you might see a decision available, and that might be the declare statute in restraint of appeals. And immediately with this decision being available, we know that the Pope hates us, which is actually not a good thing. Ideally, some of you may restart until the Pope is friendly, but it doesn't matter too much. It's better for him to be friendly, but it's not a big deal if he's not. Next, it's time to hire some advisors. We do have a bunch of level two half cost admin advisors, and I do recommend getting the yearly inflation reduction guy. I do think he is scripted. A bunch of these are historical artists that actually existed. And we even have Donatello right here, who's a half cost level three advisor at 2.93 ducats a month. Although we aren't making that much money to get Donatello right now. So I'm just going to get this yearly inflation reduction guy. Get a Diplo rep or improve relations a level one Diplo guy. I'm going to get this Diplo rep guy and get a morale, discipline or fort defense level one mill guy. There we go. Now shift focus to dip. We aren't going to be doing a diplomatic idea, but we do need to do this to unlock the mission. Alternatively, you could humiliate or show strength on one of your rivals to get more than 50 power projection for an additional point. And by hiring a level two guy, you could have 12. But I do think this is the more new player friendly way where you just focus. And just like that, you'll be able to take this mission. There we go. The next mission requires us to have two allies in Italy, and that's exactly what we're going to try and do. So go into your alliances and try to find some allies. As an Italian nation, funnily enough, we can also probably ally both Austria and France without them breaking their alliance with us. So what I'm going to do right here is ally Milan. It is a good idea to ally a northern Italian nation like Savoy or Milan, and then another Italian nation could be the Pope. In my case, the Pope doesn't like me, so I'm just going to ally Saluto. And then once I take the mission, I'm going to break that alliance with them. So your alliances should be a nation in Northern Italy, ideally the Pope, and then one or both of Austria and France. If you can only link with one of them, you should do Austria. So that's why I'm going to start improving relations with them immediately. Don't set any rivals just yet. Next, we can also see that our force limit is 11. So we're going to take our army right here and delete these two cavalry regiments. They're too expensive for now. We'll get them back later. And now that we've unlocked this mission, we can actually go ahead and take burger loans just like that. And with that, we're also going to hire the free company. You can also get one or two more infantry regiments. We can also see our boats right here. And we're going to take our light ship fleet and tell it to protect trade in Genoa and go home during war. 
You can also build as many light ships as you have sailors. In my case it's just two, but try and get this up to 10 as soon as you can. At this point, you can also turn off your fort and lower army maintenance to save some money. Now we're just getting alliances. There we go, a few months have passed and I've already managed to Royal Mary Austria. If I improve with them enough, I will be able to ally them. Let's go ahead and see France. And actually we're quite a bit far away from France, so I'll improve with them later. Now I'll also ally Saluzzo and I can take this mission right here that gives us permaclaims on these areas right here. And there we go, now I can actually ally Austria. Your alliance network should look a little something like this as well, maybe you've also allied the Pope. After you've secured your alliances, it's time to once again raise army maintenance and turn on forts. And once you've done that, it's time for you to declare your first war. And our first war is gonna be versus one of these four nations, either Bologna, Ferrara, Lucca, or Siena. And it's the best to be able to fight Siena first for the following reason. If you get Siena right here, you will share a sea tile with Naples, and that means you will be able to spy on them. Now, the good thing about this is Aragon is gonna let go of Naples here pretty soon, and that means we can catch Naples while they have no allies and declare on them. However, if you can't fight Siena first, don't worry about it, and just fight whichever of these nations would be the easiest to fight. And in my case, actually, Siena might be one of the easier nations to fight, because Luca are guaranteed by Milan, Ferrara are allied to Provence, and Bologna are allied to the Pope. So, Whichever one of these four nations you can declare on, do it. Preferably Siena. Of course, before that, we are gonna set our rivals, and I recommend rivaling Siena, Luca, and one of Ferrara or Bologna. I'm gonna rival Bologna. Next, you can also go ahead and recruit a general. And with that, it's time to declare your first war on whichever nation is weakest, once again, preferably Siena. If during this point you have managed to ally France, and if the surrender of main war happens, they will probably call you in. You should help out France in that war, so accept the call to arms. You won't really have to do anything. And there we go, this is the event, the Neapolitan succession, and of course, Aragon did let Naples go. Unfortunately, during this point, Naples will probably ally someone, but in the best case scenario that can happen for you is you get Siena and a spy network on Naples before Aragon lets Naples go. And in that case, you can just immediately pounce on Naples Naples as soon as Aragon lets Naples go and they don't have any allies just like this. And there we go, my war with Siena is done and during this war I did manage to Royal Mary France and I'll probably be able to ally them after this war ends, which is excellent. However, if you can do the same and if one of these guys threatens to break their alliance with you, you should break her alliance with France. Like I said, keep a hold of both of these guys if you can, but Austria is more important. We want to be friendly with the Emperor. And once your first war is done, if you're fighting Bologna, Luca, or Siena, you will full annex them, however if you fight Ferrara, you might consider vassalizing them, because they do have two provinces and we want to minimize aggressive expansion. And just like that, now that my war with Siena is done, I will be full annexing them and taking all of their money. And during this point I have been spying on Naples, which means I can immediately claim Naples just like that. And in my case, they've only allied Ferrara and they have declared on Aragon in the Neapolitan reconquest for Messina, because Aragon is also losing to both France and Castile, so that's quite an unlucky situation for them. Naples won't usually get strong allies, but sometimes it is possible for them to ally France or Austria, so be careful for that. And like I said, now that this war is done, I will also ally France. Once you hit Diplotech 4, and if you've taken money from Siena and any of their allies, you will be able to start building some buildings, and of course you should do that immediately. I'm gonna put a marketplace in Florence and Pisa. If you've gotten Luca, put one right there. If you've got Ferrara, put one right there. And by this point, this is probably what your alliances will look like. Like I said, you may also have the Pope. It is a very good idea to be friendly with them. In my case, we're rivaled, so that's that. If you get excommunicated and the Pope hates you, like in my game right here, all you have to do to get rid of those horrible effects is just buy indulgence for your sins. As we can see right here, it's 97 ducats for me, so I will take out a loan to do that. It's always worth it to take out loans to buy indulgence for your sins to stop being excommunicated. And now once a month ticks over, just like this, we're no longer excommunicated. So if that happens to you, do that. Immediately after your first war, you should start improving relations with outraged countries. Aggressive expansion will rack up pretty quickly over in Italy. And something else you might want to do is, even though your diplomats are in Valencia and Alexandria right now, and they're maximizing trade, what you might want to do is actually tell them to collect in both Genoa and Venice. Now, you won't make the most money like this, but what's more important here is to tell them to establish communities for plus 50 15% improve relations. This will help minimize aggressive expansion at the cost of maybe a ducat or two in the early game. 
so it's always worth it. Keep these guys here. After your first war is ended and you've cored up anything that you've taken, it's time to move on with your second war. And if you fought Siena, and if Naples doesn't have strong allies, your second war is going to be versus Naples in order to take some provinces down here and start expanding in less wealthy regions of Italy. However, if you can't fight Naples, once again, you're going to fight one of the four initial nations, Siena, Lucca, Ferrara, or Bologna. In my case right here, I am going to go ahead and declare on Naples. And pretty soon, I will be able to call in Milan because I already have nine favors with them. You could drag in an ally or two in this second war, or even in your first one, if you want to. And there we go. In your second war, you will probably be Miltec 4, whereas the nations you're fighting will be Miltec 3, so you'll be able to easily crush them. Once you get past the year 1450, the Renaissance will spawn, and if you're super lucky, like I've gotten here in my case, you will spawn it yourself, and you gain these wonderful points, prestige, govern from progress, and a dev discount in the province that is spawned in as the birthplace of the Renaissance. And after the Renaissance spawns, even if you have or haven't spawned it, you should activate encourage development in your capital state of Tuscany, just like this, and push your capital Florence up to 30 dev. And in my case, I only have to dev it up once to push it up to 30. Either way, get it up there so we can tick off the age objective. Of course, as Florence, we do start off as an Italian Signoria, which gives us plus 5% national tax and plus 10 national absolutism and for your tier 2 government reform as an italian signoria and for our playing tall campaign that this guide is based on i do recommend going for republicanism for plus 0.2 yearly republican tradition however since lions of the north dropped all of these are really good this one right here gives you unrest and absolutism that might not be that good but this one for manpower and this one for goods produced and female advisor chance are really really good so if you're following along with the playing tall campaign you can go with republicanism or Alternatively, you could also go with this. However, we won't really need all that manpower, so I recommend republicanism. And when you're piecing out Naples, if you're fighting them, here's what you're gonna take. The most important province to take is actually their capital of Naples because there is a nice monument right there and we are gonna get the money to build it pretty soon and it also is a center of trade. Now, if you got super lucky and if Naples looks like this in your campaign as well, you could obviously take something else down here in order to release the nation of Sicily and reconquer their cores. Although since Naples is gonna look only like this, like they look at the start in your game as well, I'm only gonna take the province of Naples to simulate the fact that they probably won't have this in your game as well. I'm also gonna get war ups right here and some money. Remember, this may not look like a lot of aggressive expansion and you may be tempted to take more, but we don't wanna use up that aggressive expansion on poor southern Italian provinces when we need to conquer rich northern Italian ones. So, their capital of Naples, and if you got lucky, something else down here. And that's your first war with Naples, done. If you've even fought them. If not, you've probably fought one of these guys up here, and like I said, full annex one of these three guys, and maybe vassalize Ferrara. After you embrace the Renaissance, you will be able to take this mission right here, which gives us cheaper advisors and yearly prestige. And if you have Republican tradition, which you should, you will also be able to take this mission for some stab. And if you have a high dev glass province, like Siena, you will also be able to spawn faceting. Once your first two wars are done, it's time to chill a little bit, wait for aggressive expansion to die down a little bit, and then move on with our further wars. Once again, our main focus is on the four initial nations. Of course, if you did manage to nab a province from Naples, if they own this in your campaign, you should release the nation of Sicily. In my case, France has broken their alliance with me now because they've allied Genoa. It's totally fine. I still have Austria and Milan, and I am trying to get the Pope to like me. When you embrace the Renaissance, you could also offer knowledge sharing to someone to make some money. For your first idea group as Florence, I do recommend opening up with innovative ideas. This is one of the best idea groups you can take as a nation such as Florence. All the idea and tech discounts and advisor discounts are awesome and now we also have plus one free policies along with that and that'll save us some more points so innovative is an excellent opener as florence of course if you're going for a tall campaign you might want to open up with quantity economic for that dev discount but that policy doesn't exist in lines of the north anymore and instead quantity and economic give us plus 10 percent land force limit and minus five percent land maintenance modifier so that's the classic opening this is the opening i like starting with innovative ideas no we won't get a setback from taking our next idea group even though we open with an admin idea group because we're already generating so much points so innovative is a great opener as florence once you pay off your burger loans remember to keep taking new burger loans so you can build even more buildings i'm gonna put a marketplace in siena just like that and i'm gonna put a church in florence as well 
Now that a little bit of time has passed, it's time to move on with your third war, once again fighting the easiest nation out of the initial nations that I said we're gonna fight. In my case right here, Luca's in a trade league with Genoa and they're allied with Aragon. I have a truce with Ferrara because I fought them when I fought Naples, so that means Bologna is pretty much the only nation I can fight. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare on them, make the Pope remove me as a rival, and make Luca leave the trade league with Genoa or end their alliance with Aragon. Fight whichever nation is the easiest for you to fight. The order doesn't really matter. For your tier 3 government reform, you should take frequent elections. For your first age ability, you should take justified wars. You're gonna be hitting the points cap a lot as Florence, and then it's time for that sweet, sweet deving. So just sort by cheapest right here, and it's a good idea to pour diplo points in high value trade good provinces like Siena, for example. And now that my war with Bologna is done, I'll be full annexing them. I already told you what to do when fighting these nations. In my case right here, Naples has now gotten some really strong allies, Venice, France, and Castile. So it was a good idea to fight them super early. And like I've said many times, when the Shadow Kingdom event fires, you should stay in the HRE as long as you're allied to Austria, because some other guys might stay as well. However, if your alliance with Austria gets broken at any point, make sure to leave because you'll get negative modifiers. Of course, if you still want to stay, you could ally the next emperor that'll get elected, that's not Austria, and still not receive those penalties. It's a good idea to put mill points in grain and cows. And there we go, because I'm allied to Austria, our country is a natural part of the empire, we will lose prestige, but we do stay in the HRE. And now that my truce with Ferrara has expired, I'll be declaring on them because they're the next weakest nation, and also Venice has declared on them, so I want to stand on this province before Venice actually gets there. Aggressive expansion isn't too bad, of course you could go a lot more aggressively than this, but then again, this guide is geared towards newer players, and we don't want to make them suffer too much. If you're expanding more rapidly than this, then you don't need a guide. And like I said, I'll be declaring on Ferrara. And there we go, now that I've defeated Ferrara, I will be full annexing them. If your AE is higher, you could of course always vassalize them. Annexing them is 23 AE, whereas vassalizing them is 19. Not a huge difference, but it may make a difference in the long run. I'm also gonna take all their money. Once you've dealt with about 3 out of the 4 initial nations that I told you to fight, that is the point where we want to start exploring other opportunities. Maybe if you got Luca, you could fight Genoa. Maybe if you're not allied to Milan, you could fight them. Mantua could be ripe for the taking. Maybe even the Pope. Or if you can catch Venice while they're fighting the Ottomans, you can fight them as well. And at this point is when you're going to start building spy networks on all of these guys. I'm going to start spying on Mantua right here. Once I get a claim on them, I'll get some claims on Venice. After that, I'll get some claims on Genoa. But if you've already taken all of these provinces that you got a claim on from this mission, well then, you'll have other claims as well. At this point, you're probably also deving. I'm gonna put some mill points in Arezzo right here, one right there, boom, there we go. Bologna is up to 10 development. And yeah, just keep pushing your provinces. Ferrara is a good province to dev in Diplo as well. Salt is a high value trade good. At this point, I can ally Castile, and I will do that. This is how my alliance network looks like right now. At this point, I got new burger loans for the third time, and I'll be upgrading the Center of Trade in Pisa to level 2, as well as the one in Naples. For your second age ability, you should take Adaptive Combat Terrain for plus 1 combat bonus in Terrain of Capital. Our capital is a hill, there's lots of hills in Italy, it'll help us out quite a lot. Now that a little bit of time has passed, I'll be moving on with my next war, you should be doing the same, and at this point, you may be declaring on any nation in Italy, depending on whichever nation you find the easiest to fight. I'm gonna wrap up the area of Tuscany right here by declaring on Luca, and since they're allied to Genoa, I'm also gonna make Genoa in their alliances with France and with Venice, so we have an easier time fighting them later. So that is my next war. Like I said, you could be fighting any of your neighbors at this point. And now that Luca have basically unconditionally surrendered, I already made Genoa and their alliances, I am gonna peace out Luca and full annex them. For your tier 4 government reform, once again all of these are very good for a Catholic nation such as us, but I do recommend lands for the church, although be careful of that clergy influence, or maintain the balance of power. Although cheaper advisors or even more admin tech discount is not a bad idea at all. So all of these are super valid and you won't make a mistake choosing either one of them. In my case right here, I'm gonna go for lands for the church. Now that a little bit of time has passed, I'll be declaring on Venice in my case. Now, they're not fighting the Ottomans, and when Venice do fight the Ottomans, when the Ottomans declare on Albania, that's the perfect time to strike on them, but they are fighting Austria and Hungary. So, I'm gonna be declaring on Venice here, calling in Castile, and in this same war, since I'll be fighting Naples, I'll also make Naples end their alliances with France and Venice, so I can have an easier time fighting them later. So, that's my opportunity, and you should take opportunities like these. After we're done with the initial four nations up here that we were gonna fight, it's time to expand everywhere that we can, and take the best opportunities that we have. So, this is my next war. 
I'll go and take care of Naples first. It took a while, but the Pope finally doesn't hate me. When you get the Pazzi conspiracy event, I do recommend uh, taking this first option right here. When you fight Venice, take as much as you can from them while not getting too much aggressive expansion. Of course, you are going to want to focus on the important provinces like Verona, which has a center of trade, and then these two which produce paper, these two which make cloth. But in my case, Verona was just released by Austria here. Luckily, I'm spying on them preemptively. So what I'm going to do in my game is take Ravenna right here, the province we declared on, along with these two provinces. We don't want too much aggressive expansion. Even though we can not take a lot more, this will prevent us from fighting other wars because then we'll get coalitioned. So this is good enough for me for now. I'll also take war reps and all their money. During all this time, I'm still building buildings. Now that I have the workshops, I'm building them as well. I already have two, building a third one. I'll build one in Luca and in Ferrara as well. And uh, look at what the Pope did. That's the consequence of my breaking Naples' alliances with everyone. Uh, sometimes things like this will happen. Hopefully they won't for you. And now I'm fighting the Pope because Castile called me into a war versus Epirus and Epirus are guaranteed by the Pope. Now the war with the Pope ended, Castile actually gave me two provinces, Urbino and Salerno. Now this might be a good thing, but it might not, because we can't control aggressive expansion when an ally gives us provinces. But that doesn't seem to be too bad, at least not with any other nations. The Pope doesn't like us. For your naval doctrine, you should get either galley combat ability to help you beat any naval powers that you might be fighting, such as Aragon, Genoa, Venice, or Naples. Otherwise, go with ship trade power. I'm not really going to be fighting anyone with a strong navy. I don't really need to land on islands, so that's why I'm going to go with merchant navy. Now that my truce with Genoa has expired from earlier, I'll actually be declaring on them since they're only allied to Burgundy, and Burgundy won't even help them. So this is a perfect opportunity to grab a very, very valuable province. Like I said, at this point, we're declaring on whoever we can. If you're present in southern Italy, you might be beating up Naples. You may even be fighting Aragon, reconquering some Neapolitan or Sicilian cores. Or if you're not that present in southern Italy, like me, you're focusing in the north. During all this time, we're building buildings all the time and deving with our spare points all the time. This is what my development looks like. A lot of these provinces have more than 10 dev. In fact, all of them do. I've bumped a bunch of these to 10 production, bumping some of these to 10 manpower development and I have a ton of marketplaces and a ton of production buildings going. You should be doing the same. You will have spare cash and you will have spare points. Now that I've defeated Genoa in this very simple war, I will be taking the province of Genoa from them. Once again, I could full annex them and a coalition probably wouldn't form, but we do want to still minimize aggressive expansion. I'll also get war reps and their money. For your second idea group, after we opened up with Innovative, I do recommend Plutocratic Ideas. These are available to Republics, and they're super, super nice for a nation like Florence. We gain even more mercenary discounts along with the ones in our National Ideas, plus 10% morale is awesome, the unrest is great, plus one merchant for making a bunch of money, plus 10% goods produced is insane, and here we have even more development discount, something that we do want. And then we have plus 20% manpower recovery speed as a finisher. So Pluto. Super nice idea pick that we don't get to choose often, so that's why I recommend it for Florence. This isn't the classic tall opening. Of course, if you don't agree with Innovative and Pluto, you could always go quantity economic quality trade, and that's another perfect tall opening as well. Of course, we will also be taking those idea groups just later. And actually, now that Naples has been beaten down so much by Tunis and by the Pope, which of course stems from the fact that I made them break their lands from France and Venice, look at how small they are and they don't even have any allies. So that's why now I'm gonna be declaring on Naples and vassalizing them. Of course, you already know why. It's so we can reconquer their cores from Tunis, and maybe if we ally the Pope, we can just beg the Pope to give those cores back to them. Otherwise, we'll be reconquering them from the Pope as well. This is a perfect opportunity, something that you might do even if you wanna get Naples' cores back from Aragon or Castile, and something that you would be doing if you have Sicily. You already know the strategy of reconquering your vassal's cores. And now that I've pretty much crushed Naples, I will be making them a vassal and getting all of their money. The aggressive expansion is quite higher than it would be, but it was worth it just so we can nab them before anyone else does. And now, all of these cores are ripe for reconquest. Once you get at least one level 3 advisor, you will be able to commission the Mona Lisa, which gives us even more tech and idea discounts. And if you have a cardinal, you'll also be able to take this mission right here. At this point, it's time to chill for me. If you're AES high as well, it's time to chill for you as well. But if not, 
were slowly chipping away, probably at Northern Italy. If you got lucky, maybe at Southern Italy. At this point, I am running a level three advisor. He is half cost, of course, and with all those advisor discounts, he's super cheap. And then two level two advisors, one of which is half cost. At this point of the game, 1485, we should have about a 50% advisor discount. Of course, we do also start off with the Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence, which is at tier 2 at the start, and it gives us minus 1% prestige decay, minus 10% advisor discounts, and plus 1 monthly splendor. We will be upgrading this to the max when we have the money, we'll be upgrading this to the max when we have the money, the Dome de Milan as well, and then the one in Venice too, the Doge's Palace. For your tier 5 government reform, since we're doing a tall game focusing on trade and stuff like that, I do recommend going for Union of States for global trade power. However, we do gain the negative modifiers from Merchant Republics, so if you're not cool with that, you should go with one of the other ones, and this one is actually pretty good for the gov cost. Although the provincial governments isn't that bad either. I'm gonna take administrative divisions in my case. And by the way, I'm not fighting Tunis, just helping out Castile. Now that aggressive expansion has died down a little bit, I'll be declaring on Aquilia right here. Someone made them pop out from Venice, they don't have any allies, so that's an excellent opportunity. We'll take everything we can get. And now my war with Aquilia is done, I'll be full annexing them. At this point, we're still focusing on Italy. When you get the third merchant from Plutocratic Ideas, you can put him in Valencia, Ragusa, Alexandria, or Tunis. I'm gonna put mine in Valencia and tell him to transfer. These guys are still establishing communities. And by around the 1490s, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as Florence and started off by conquering one of our four small neighbors, Siena, Luca, Ferrara, or Bologna, whichever one you could fight, but prefer Probably Siena first, so you could get a spy network going on Naples, so you can expand down here as well. If you did that or not, it doesn't matter too much since that's just an opportunistic war, and if you did, you may have as much land as I do. You may have Naples as a vassal and trying to reconquer their cores like I am. You may have Sicily and have reconquered their cores already, and you may even own all of Southern Italy if it was easier for you to expand there rather than in Northern Italy. Of course, that's not the only place we could possibly focus on. We also expanded over here in the area of Tuscany and into our smaller neighbors, and once we gobbled up the initial four small nations that surrounded us, that's when the expansion opportunities really arose, and after that point you could have declared on pretty much whichever nation it was the easiest to fight, and whichever opportunity was the best. You could have fought the Pope, Venice, Genoa, Milan, Savoy, whoever was here, it doesn't matter anymore because now you are the strongest nation in Italy and you're probably on the great powers list. And it doesn't matter if you haven't conquered the same things that I have. Like I said, the most important thing is to focus on your opportunities and look about this big. In my case right here, I have 16 provinces. You should have around 15 to 20 provinces realistically, depending on your opportunities. Of course, during this point, we weren't only expanding militarily. We were also buffing up our nation in development and in buildings as well, quite significantly. This is what my development looks like right now. As we can see, I've bumped up a whole lot of provinces, especially the high value trade good provinces, up to 10 production so we can make a bunch of money from that. This is what the development map mode looks like. Awesome, awesome dev. And these are the marketplaces that I've built in all the center of trade provinces. I've built a bunch of workshops as well in the high value trade good provinces. A couple of churches here and there too. It never hurt no one. And a bunch of barracks in the cows and grain provinces as well. At this point, all my centers of trade are also upgraded to level 2. Once I get the money, I'll be upgrading them to level 3. You can have as many level 3 centers of trade as you have merchants, so that's pretty nice. And I have a fleet right here protecting trade in Genoa, and I'm building up my battle fleet as we speak at this moment. I have three merchants. These two guys are establishing communities. This guy is maximizing profit, and that is what I'm looking like. This is my alliances right now, Castile, Austria, and Poland. At this point, you will also be probably allied to Austria. You may still be allied with the Pope. They're the final nation in Italy that we're going to fight, and you may be allied with France as well. You will have no trouble getting big allies that will help you out versus the big nations that you're going to fight. And after this point, you're going to continue to expand in the same directions we've already been expanding, slowly chipping away at northern Italy in all these super devved up provinces that will generate a lot of aggressive expansion, and maybe fighting in southern Italy, maybe reconquering some cores, maybe taking stuff for yourself, maybe you have Sicily as a subject, maybe you have Naples as a subject, that's generally the way you're going to be expanding down here. You may have fought a weak Aragon and taken Sardinia from 
them. You may already even have Corsica from Genoa, and if you have claims bordering claims, if you found a weak Tunis, you may also be present in Tunis as well, where you would be constructing trade companies to maximize that profit and remove the religious disunity penalty. And after this point, you should aim to unify all of Italy, form Tuscany at Admin Deck 10 because it's a super nice map color and flag, and then you could even go on to form Italy once you have all the necessary provinces. If you're planning on keeping your tall campaign, you should stick with Florence ideas. However, if you're planning out on blobbing out a whole lot, you should take the Italian ideas since they're better for blobbing, whereas Florence slash Tuscan ideas are better for playing tall. Speaking of playing tall, we did open up with Innovative and Pluto, and for your next idea groups, you are gonna wanna go quantity or quality and then trade, and then whichever one of these two you didn't take, basically once again, quantity or quality, and then economic. So Innovative Pluto, quantity trade, quality economic, and then the final two are up to you, and you will have the ultimate tall campaign with the cheapest advisors, the cheapest dev costs, the cheapest tech, cheapest ideas, and the most powerful army as well. Like I said, when you rack up money, don't forget to upgrade all four monuments that are present in Italy, and then once you get the St. Peter's Basilica from the Pope, you can bump this one up as well, because it does give us cheaper ideas. For your tier 6 government reform, you should go with the presidential system. For tier 7, you should take embrace the economic theory, but if you have economic ideas, you should take this one right here for cheaper dev and goods produced. For tier 8, consolidated power is not bad, although you could go with devolution of powers too. For tier 9, military principle is super nice and unique. Winning wars gives us 5 republican tradition, but if not, you can go with Principles of Enlightenment. For Tier 10, I recommend Military Rulership or Citizenry. For Tier 11, you should go with Appointment by Committee. And for Tier 12, you should strengthen Executive Powers. And by around the 1490s, you should be set up as the most powerful nation in Italy, one of the most powerful nations in Europe, and you will go on to dominate the entire continent through your economy, navy, and army, while maybe not expanding so much, developing your provinces, building the right buildings, and playing a super nice and super sweet tall campaign. And like I said, around the 1490s, your realm should look a little something like this. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash live. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guides like this or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.